Today I'd like to start Attic to Basement State Cleanouts video with a home in Washington, D.C. that was built in 1941. It had six bedrooms and 3,700 square feet of living space and lots and lots of books. The house was built like ones I saw on a visit to New Orleans. The lower level was brick and raised so you walked up concrete stairs with a wrought iron railing to get to the main entrance. There was a porch there and also another porch above it on the second floor where the bedrooms were. The owner had not lived in the house for quite some time before she died. No one had emptied the food out of the cupboards or the refrigerator. The kitchen smelled better once we emptied those out. The owner had been a librarian at an elementary school or the children's department at a public library. The living room had large built-in bookcases on either side of the fireplace, plus more bookcases throughout every room of the house except the kitchen and bathrooms. They were also piled on the floor. Some adult fiction and non-fiction books were first editions. I called a book buyer I knew and he bought 39 books. The son had been given five months to take out of the house what he wanted and get it emptied, but the five months was almost up and he was not moving fast enough for his siblings, so I was hired and he was uh, to move it along. The son had brought in a woman who dealt with antiques and she had brought in antique dealers to purchase items before I was hired. The son lived near his mom's house and would come by at the end of the day to see our progress, answer any questions I had, and look at any of the treasures we had found. He asked that I set aside any jewelry for his sister, two pieces of furniture, a piece of art, and any family photos or certificates for himself. It took 10 days for my crew and I to empty out this large house, one day to clean out the third floor, and two days for the second floor, two days for the first floor, and two days for the basement. We sorted books and papers most of the time we were there, so the sun had not done much to get the house empty. After three days of our working in the house, he emailed me that he was impressed with the progress we had made in a short time. As I've said before, we can empty it quicker than family because we were not emotionally attached to anything in the house. We just look at an object and say, is it worth selling? If not, can it go to charity? If not, it goes in the trash. This house was three stories and had a moldy basement. We filled the dumpster and had it emptied four times. I used five of my helpers on this job on various days. Besides my helpers, I hired a crew to shovel out wet junk from the basement floor and carry furniture to the dumpster. Some of it could be thrown off the porches into the dumpster. We bagged up small items with black Costco trash bags. These bags hardly ever broke. Hangers would poke through most bags, but not them. I will admit that twice in my career, I threw broken glass into a black trash bag, and with other items on top of it, the jagged glass poked through the bag and cut me on the leg. I have the scars to prove it. And both times I had to go to the emergency room after work at the end of the day to have the hospital staff look to see if the cut needed stitches. One time it did, the other time I probably should have had stitches. I also had a porta potty delivered to the house the first day we worked there. The company was called Don's Johns. I had told the attorney in charge that it was going to take quite a while to go through and empty the house out and there was no running water. I also knew that after we finished our work, a crew was going to have to come in to fix the mold and other repairs that needed to be done before the house went on the market. We donated many books to the nearby public library in Washington, D.C. Two of my helpers worked the last day with associated auctioneers who brought four workers with them to load their trailers with items that would sell at auction. Because of the length of time and the number of helpers I needed to empty out this house, it was one of my biggest jobs in 2010. My invoice was for $7,220. Surprisingly, we only found $39 and change in this house on the floor and in pockets.
next was a condo in Chevy Chase, Maryland, and it only took five days to finish. I reserved the elevator in the building one day from one to five, and Weschler's auction house had a crew come in, pick up 17 pieces of furniture and 14 pieces of art, plus a few boxes of glassware that we had packed. They had some unusual and also beautiful pieces of furniture, rugs, and art. That's all there is to say about this place. I'm also including two photos from an assessment in Rockville. They had a spinning wheel, wooden chair, and an old doll carriage. In the second photo is a stool, bench, and a doll crib. They caught my eye. Thanks for watching Attic to Basement Estate Cleanouts. Please subscribe and go to the Facebook page, 800 Houses, 800 Jobs, to see more photos from these jobs. Here are the photos. Bye.